And the readings will now be given by Craig. The Bible. Matthew. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor a script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy. And there abide till ye go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in the synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, Him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. John. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. And that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. 
I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. I will now read correlative passages from Prose Works and Science and Health of Keats and Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. From Unity of Good in Prose Works, The Savior's Mission. Jesus came to earth, but the Christ, that is the divine idea of the divine principle which made heaven and earth, was never absent from the earth and heaven. Hence the phraseology of Jesus, who spoke of the Christ as one who came down from heaven, yet as the Son of Man which is in heaven. John, 3rd chapter, 13th verse. By this we understand Christ to be the divine idea, brought to the flesh in the Son of Mary. Salvation is as eternal as God. To mortal thought, Jesus appeared as a child and grew to manhood to suffer before Pilate and on Calvary because he could reach and teach mankind only through this conformity to mortal conditions. But capital soul never saw the Savior come and go because the divine idea is always present. Jesus came to rescue men from these very illusions to which he seemed to conform, from the illusion which calls sin real and man a sinner needing a Savior, the illusion which calls sickness real and man an invalid needing a physician, the illusion that death is as real as life. From such thoughts, mortal inventions, one and all, Christ Jesus came to save men through ever-present and eternal good. Mortal man is a kingdom divided against itself. With the same branch, he articulates truth and error. We say that God is all and there is none beside him and then talk of sin and sinners as real. We call God omnipotent and omnipresent and then conjure up from the dark abyss of nothingness a powerful presence named evil. We say that harmony is real and in harmony is its opposite and therefore unreal. Yet we discant comment upon sickness, sin, and death as realities. With the tongue, quote, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men who are made after the similitude or human concept of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. This is from James. Mortals are free moral agents to choose whom they would serve. If God, then let them serve him, and he will be unto them all in all. If God is ever present, he is neither absent from himself nor from the universe. Without him, the universe would disappear and space, substance, and immortality be lost. St. Paul says, quote, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your own sins. Close quote. Christ cannot come to mortal and material sense, which sees not God. This false sense of substance must yield to his eternal presence, and so dissolve. Rising above the false to the true evidence of life is the resurrection that takes hold of eternal truth. Coming and going belong to mortal consciousness. God is the same yesterday and today and forever. The Christian saith, Christ, God died for me. 
He came to save me. Yet God dies not, and is the ever presence that neither comes nor goes. And man is forever his image and likeness. Open quote. The things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Second Corinthians. This is the mystery of godliness. That God good is never absent, and there is none beside good. Mortals can understand this only as they reach the life of good and learn that there is no life in evil. Then shall it appear that the true ideal of omnipotent and ever-present good is an ideal wherein and wherefore there is no evil. Sin exists only as a sense and not as capital soul. Destroy the sense of sin and sin disappears. Sickness, sin, or death is a false sense of life and good. Destroy this trinity of error, and you find truth. In science, Christ never died. In material sense, Jesus died and lived. The fleshy Jesus seemed to die, though he did not. The truth or life in divine science, undisturbed by human error, sin, and death, set forever. I am the living God. And man is my idea, never in matter, nor resurrected from it. Quote, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Luke. Mortal sense, confining itself to matter, is all that can be buried or resurrected. Mary had risen to discern faintly God's ever-presence and that of his idea man, but her mortal sense, reversing science and spiritual understanding, interpreted disappearing as a risen Christ. The I am was neither buried nor resurrected. The way, the truth, and the life were never absent for a moment. This trinity of love lives and reigns forever. And from Science and Health, Keep the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. To divest thought of false trust and material evidences in order that the spiritual facts of being may appear, this is the great attainment by means of which we shall sweep away the false and give place to the true. Thus we may establish in truth the temple or body who, quote, builder and maker is God. 